Hello and welcome to Dungeons and Dragons Stark Alliance. In this video we're going to outline what I believe to be the ultimate DPS build guide for Drizzt. So let's get started. This is my secondary character so I have not applied any attribute points or feet points yet. But I'm going to outline what I would recommend. The way this video is going to work, we're going to start with stats, then go to abilities, then discuss moves, then feats, gear sets, and conclude on how to spend your gold and what to upgrade. So let's get started with stats. When you look at stats, I recommend that you show the details so you can see exactly what's going to change. To start, Dritz is a dexterity character, so I do recommend you increase his dexterity, but I would really increase this to about 15 before moving on to other attributes. So first five points, because you start with 10, would go to dexterity. And you can see here, this increases our crit chance, which is already extremely high for Dritz, as well as critical damage. So that will be good. Dexterity number one. Number two, I am actually recommending that you bring up your strength to about 12 to 15 uh, would be my recommendation. There are a few things here. One, this increases physical damage. And two, this increases armor, increasing your survivability. Strength is effectively Drizzt's secondary stat. So do not overlook it. After that, I would recommend doing a mix of uh, intellect or intelligence and constitution. Intelligence will increase condition penetration. Your scimitars will have different things that can apply damage. And more importantly, it reduces your cooldown, which is critical to the moves uh, or abilities that you're going to want to use. So between constitution and intelligence, it's really up to you uh, which one you go. Both of them are really good. And then constitution is going to increase your stamina as well as your hit points, making you a little tankier and more survivable in con uh, combat. For me personally, I'm probably going to bring up constitution to about 15 or so uh, before I move over to intelligence or intellect. So those are stats. Let's move over to abilities. Now, abilities, I recommend fairy fire and battle trance. So Fairy Fire will inflict Curse and Frighten on monsters within range and causes goblins to flee. This is extremely critical because between Curse and Frighten, I'm pretty sure it's Cursed, will allow you to do double damage. So especially when you're fighting bosses, you run up to them, you Fairy Fire them, and then you can burn them down. And then you can also get goblins to flee if there are a bunch of people around you and you're just trying to uh, get, get away from people, you could also use it. The next one is Battle Trance. This grants Vampiric and Frenzy to Jizz. This is absolutely critical, especially when you're taking on higher tier and longer runs where you're going to want to prioritize increasing your loot. So you're basically gaining other abilities to heal yourself. So these are the two moves that we're going to unlock and then I'd recommend applying. You could go with Blink and Clouded Daggers, in my opinion, they are not nearly as good as these two. Let's move on to moves. So, to outline this. Fairy Fire, you have to unlock by unlocking uh, these six to begin with. And then you can then unlock Battle Trance. These unlock at level 7. So I do recommend that you prioritize working towards Fairy Fire and Battle Trance as you're collecting gold and unlocking these two. Other moves to uh, call out... Uh, is Sphere of Darkness, pressing G. This one has a 25% to inflict Frightened and deal slight damage, uh, stamina destruction. So just uh, be aware of that. Uh, but when you have a really big group, like if everyone's on Bruner or Wolfgar and you're kind of standing back for a minute, you can deal a fair amount of damage by just sending an orb out there. So I do recommend that you pick this up, uh, or excuse me, Sphere of Darkness, and, and use it. The other piece... Uh, is Dark Portal. Now, this is a absolute critical one. So, if you walk backwards and then click um, left trigger, this summons an unblockable portal of darkness that swallows monsters and deals base necrotic damage. But what's more important is it has a 70% chance to inflict cursed and fills your ultimate meter by 2%. So, those two things are really critical. If I'm understanding correctly, Curse effectively allows you to do double damage on enemies. 
So that's absolutely critical to apply these, especially to higher tier monsters or bosses. Um, but again, uh, Fairy Fire is going to be a, little, a lot more effective because uh, you have a much longer range where you can do it. Okay, other moves, you're going to want to pick them up. They're all kind of fun. Those are the ones that I wanted to call out uh, specifically and making sure that you pick up Fairy Fire and Battle Trance given my build and my recommendation here. Let's move over to feats. The Hunter is your friend. Now, you're gonna wanna put all your points into the Hunter if you're trying to maximize your damage. Uh, you, you gain physical bonus damage from airborne attacks, just general physical bonus damage, uh, physical damage after a dash, critical hit damage, which is um, absolutely imperative, uh, and uh, chance, increased chance to critical hit and then stamina reduction so all of these are really really good and are going to help you increase your damage or allow you to increase your stamina to effectively just keep whacking away at enemies now if you are finding that you have to tank you can make an argument for the ranger that's going to give you kind of resistance health etc armor i do not necessarily recommend ranger unless you are effectively having to tank the entire time because you're going to output so much damage it really shouldn't matter so what i would recommend working towards is keen mind and kind of building out this tree because that's going to reduce your cooldowns allowing you to use fairy fire and vampiric more often so you can heal yourself and output more damage uh, from enemies so those are beats let's take a look at gear sets there are two gear sets I recommend, and unfortunately, I'm having a very difficult time building them out on this character. The first gear set I recommend getting five pieces of is Dragon's Bane. This gear set, I think, is the best. If you really love Cloud of Daggers, you could go eight pieces, but effectively here on the right, you can see you're increasing your critical damage by up to 30%. If we already looked at Dritz's stats, we know that he already has very high chance to crit. And then given additional pieces, you're going to further increase the probability to critical strike. So increasing your critical damage is absolutely critical. See what I did there? The second set, which I don't think I'm wearing because of just like level stuff. And this is embarrassing. Um... Where is my uh, Tundra Raptor gear? I would recommend getting five pieces Dragon Bane, three pieces uh, Tundra Raptor, because this reduces your stamina cost. I personally think this is the best bang for your buck, because it just effectively uh, allows you to keep attacking and comboing to burn down the enemy, dodging all that fun, or dashing and all that fun stuff. So that would be my kind of ideal setup. Three in Tundra, uh, and then five in Dragon's Bane. Again, on this character, I'm having like one heck of a time building him out uh, from that standpoint. So that is my recommendation for gear sets. Let's talk about gold. Now, a few principles with gold. My Number favorite one, drought. you can use it to unlock moves. Later so then. when you spend your gold, you're going to want to prioritize getting fairy fire and battle trance so that's where i would recommend spending your gold uh, but as you do that i do recommend Take a look through here unlocking stamina potion at least level one to to um allow yourself to regain stamina because you permanently so long, can decrease your stamina bar by doing ah! certain moves uh you know as you do it so for example our orb Right, you can see there our stamina permanently decreases. So making sure you have a stamina potion to make sure you can kind of re-increase your maximum neighbor? stamina is critical. So after moves, make sure you do grab your stamina potion or actually I'd grab it first. And then I would upgrade health and stamina uh, as your priority for kind of consumables, which I have not done yet, so I should do because you're going to want to make That's sure you can heal yourself and have Commerce enough stamina. Rocks. The next piece you could get is your potion of hero, uh, heroism. I do recommend upgrading this, right? Your ultimates 
are your ultimates for a reason. So I like to keep these three. These other ones are really up to you. Alchemist Fire is kind of nice uh, if, if you, if you want to use it to just increase your physical damage. To be honest, if you build your character right, you're not going to need it. But it's a nice little bonus to make sure that if you want to burn down the enemy or if you're taking on higher tier content that you're a little under leveled for, I do recommend picking that up. So that's Always how I recommend spending your gear. Let's talk about Let's upgrading see what your I got gear. Your size. So to upgrade gear, uh, you have to spend crystals and gold. And they're like different components. At the end of the day, save everything until you get your legendary rank 5. So even rank 4, you could do if you're having trouble farming at rank 5. But what I'm doing here is saving everything, all my crystals, until... I can get my rank 5 piece that I'm going to keep. So we're not going to keep this, uh, so effectively your legendary rank 5 or your epic uh, rank 5, you're going to want that because the differences in ranks uh, is sub substantive, not only from an armor perspective, uh, but just like general bonuses you're going to get and all that good stuff. So at the end of the day, if you're looking to build your final gear set, you want rank 5, legendary, because you're probably going to use that for the majority of your game so long, once Drizzt. you fully gear out your, your set. So, Grizz, it's really fun, um, really effective, uh, really cool. The other thing I'm going to mention here that we talked about, but I don't think I highlighted, is your scimitars. So, a lot of them are going to have, like, necrotic damage or other pieces. Um, if you're going to build... Uh, your set just make sure you keep that in mind because that plus ne necrotic damage uh, is really helpful But then you're also going to want armor penetration condition and elemental penetration For uh, Drizzt you're going to want to focus on condition penetration So we saw that a little bit here on our character sheet for a condition penetration That is uh, intelligence just remember that's a lot more important because you're going to have that necrotic damage in general although if you do get scimitars that can have some elemental damage to it it's also important to have so thanks so much for watching good. Uh, i am actively trying to grow my channel i'm a small youtuber so if you're interested in this content and want to support the channel please consider subscribing and dropping this video a thumbs up also post comments what do you think is the best build how can i improve my build as i continue playing thanks for watching and hope to see you in future videos shadow coast out